at the NNL East. I'm with Jeff Blumhoff. I'm looking at the GTO and loving that, but what really has caught my eye for the longest time is this wagon, this Dodge wagon. It's like what we all grew up with. The wagon to me symbolizes a bunch of kids. We're getting in a car, we're going somewhere cool. We're gonna stop, we're gonna get gas, and gas smells really good. I agree, and I'm a part of that generation as well, Doug. I mean, you know, I, I was born in the late 70s. I had a grandfather who had, a, I think, a Ford LTD wagon in a very similar color, actually. He kind of inspired me to build this. You look at somebody like Robert Burns, who's kind of brought a lot of these oddball items to market. Okay, so that's where this started. Correct. One of his castings. Right. It's resin. Correct, it's a 3D yeah. printed body. Yep. He'll give you bumpers, tail panels, uh, headlights, grills. It's kind of up to you to supply the rest. So you had to take care of whatever plating was gonna be on there. If you wanna know the plating process, yeah. I use a little motor car uh, company in Reading, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Dale. Dale's pretty consistent, yeah. yeah. Did you have to do the handles and the grips on the back and the roof rack. Actually, these grips are molded in place. They're very delicate, but they're really well cast. Uh, the roof rack I did make uh, brass rod for the cross pieces and then just styrene. And then I um, shot it in Molotow and clear coated over it. So. Man, that's looking good. Thank you. It's a lot of fun. Obviously, you know, the hard part is glass and then everything underneath. I spliced in a chassis from a 68 Dodge Charger. I think I had to lengthen it a little bit. Um, for the windshield, again, a piece of acetate. I actually carved a channel into the four sides so it would fit in place. And then I tried to airbrush a shade band to kind of replicate, replicate that shade band. You've got a, an overall tint on the windows, right? Yeah. I mean, if you look at the glass industry, um, auto glass has like a blue-green tint on pretty much most windows from the early 70s forward. Um, can I mention Yuha Aereo? I mean, look at his oh, builds throughout the yeah. years. Oh, yeah. That was a detail that he couldn't live without, and I've kind of adapted that same, I try to replicate it where it's, where it's necessary, so. And that's what's really cool about this, because you get that sense, if that was clear glass, it just, it wouldn't be there. I agree. In the 50s and into the early 60s, when you were sitting in traffic, you could look through a car it, to see what was in front of it. Right. As time's gone on, the tint's gotten darker. Very true. This one's your most recent build? It is. Again, from Robert Burns, uh, he offered a Dodge Polera that I think it had base model trim. It maybe had a body side molding that I removed. And in its place, I put that 500 trim along the bottom just to give it, it's a bit more of a sporty appearance. So pretty easily done with some styrene. My friend Mike at Model Car World actually printed the Polera 500 scripts for me on his Alp printer you have one of those. But again, taking parts available from, I think, a Lindbergh front half of a 64 Dodge. Yep. Great overspray. Sure. Yeah. I don't know what the Great rule is. Factory. Some people say yes, some people yeah. say no. Well, it depends on what factory it was and what, what day it was. I think you're right. And who was on vacation. I think you're right. But you see, that car, that car and that trim level, that's the cover of the brochure car. That's correct, yeah. yeah that's not the one like three pages back. Very true, very true. Fine scale modeler allowed me to write a build story, and that's on the cover of the January, February issue of 2023. So check it out, a lot of fun. It's so good to see it 3D. You know, you get the magazine and go, wow, this is cool. True. And then you see the real thing, and it's like a star. That's the great thing about coming to this show is obviously with the internet, yeah. you, know, you know names, some faces, you know their builds. So to see them in person is kind of cool. Hear the stories, you know, yep. to hear the stories about inspiration. What got you there? Yeah. And how much you loved the build, the problems you solved on the way. Absolutely. How many times you had to throw it back in the box and walk away, come back a month later, or whatever it takes. I've done the GTO convertible in my favorite color. Oh, good. And I can imagine the up top would also be blue. I believe so. It's so refined. It's more than a Chevrolet. It's a Pontiac or an Oldsmobile when there's a colored top. I agree. It sets off the chrome. Was that a, out of the box? Not exactly. It actually started off as a uh, resin offering from Reliable Resin. He makes kind of an improved 70 GTO. Yeah. It had a caved in roof and I didn't know what to do with it. So that kind of led me to a convertible. I robbed it, I could actually pull this out. I took the windshield frame and the cowl from a 72 Cutlass convertible, because yeah. I knew all the kind of guts were in place. Sure. 
Uh, this makes it a little bit better in transportation if I have to move. And obviously you've got a blue-green tint, which that's, that's my must-have. But if you look through the window, you can see it's got a little bit of a blue-green shade to it. What material did you use for the tint? So I make a little concoction. It's Tamiya Clear Blue, Tamiya Clear Green with some of their clear base. And then it's just a matter of finding the right ratio of how much you thin it. You airbrush kind of a wet coat on the inside of the glass and don't ever touch it because it'll fingerprint out. Okay, so one wet coat, not I do one wet several light ones. Yeah. Wow. It looks great. That, that that's that's the rep, that's the formula right now. I don't know. I may find a better way, or somebody else might. So please share if you do. I actually talked to somebody earlier today and said, you know, it'd be great is if you made a, a decal film, like a decal that I could apply to the inside with whatever ratio or percentage of op opacity or whatever you call it to replicate what I've done, but with a decal that must be out there. I don't think it is. Hopefully, it will be soon. <laughs> And the charger. I'm, I'm loving that air grabber screw. Oh, thanks. So I believe I took some of Scale Motorsport upholstery decal to kind of replicate a filter element. Yeah. It's not perfect, but it's close. In my club in Cleveland, I was kind of brought into this hobby by a lot of Mopar fanatics. They kind of brought me under their wing. So it's just a matter of making a few changes to go from a Charger RT to a Super B. There's a few aftermarket things involved. and I mean, butterscotch is such a polarizing color, isn't it? A lot of love, a lot of hate. Yeah, right. Thank you for doing a long drive out there. You bet. Uh, it's kind of become, except for the last three years, but it's, you know, we get a group of eight to ten guys from our club in Cleveland that come out here. So they put on a heck of a good show, good turnout. And, of course, as soon as you leave here, you're filled with new ideas or that next project. Right. Yeah, so what's next? I've got something from Robert Burns I want to work on. It's a 73 Pontiac Grand, Grand Am. But I jump around a lot. I mean, I've, you know, I get into exotics a little bit, Ferraris, Lamborghinis. I've got some kind of historic Lamborghinis and Ferraris in the stash I'd like to get to. I, I love Dodge Vans. I mean, so who knows? We'll see. We'll see. Surprise us. Okay, we'll do. Okay. Thanks, Thanks. again, Doug. Thanks, Mike.